It's time to make a board game with me, your host, Tom Fremgen. Hey, do you like fantasy board games? Well, if you're anything like me, that answer is yes. And I don't know about you, but as I look around these days, thanks to the internet and cheap digital printing, it seems that homemade board games are becoming all the rage. So I said to myself, self? Yeah, that's an old joke. I like old jokes. But I said, self? Let's make a board game. Now, before I dig into making a game, I thought it would be fun to go over fantasy board games that I like. Now, as an RPGer, most fantasy board games to me are simply an alternative to playing an old-school paper-and-pencil miniatures-and-dice role-playing game. Even as a kid, I was trying to hack D&D before I got my first fantasy board game, Dungeon. A simple, fun little game of hack-and-slash, kill the monsters and get the treasure. I had a lot of fun with this one, and I now play it with my own kids, though sadly I lost my original copy. The one thing that bugs me about Dungeon, though, is the so-called advanced and beginner levels. I just don't get the point of creating characters that can't go to every room on the board. The next couple of games I love are sadly out of print, and they can take several hours to play. First up, Titan. This game was amazing. You play as a titan in charge of several small armies populated by various monsters, from centaurs up to archangels. The object is to build up your armies, create more armies, and do battle with all the other players' armies. And to win, you don't have to defeat all the other armies, just the ones that the other players' titans are in, if you can find them. So then the last titan in the game wins. The game is really crazy and long. Depending on your luck, it could take more than a day, as battles between armies are actually fought out on smaller game boards based on the terrain of the area. Most of the time, these small battles would be a game unto themselves, but in Titan, you can expect to have many such battles in one game. Titan is just a lot of strategy and monster mash fun. Next, Knights of Camelot. Now this is basically a role-playing game where the dungeon master has been replaced with a ton of random rolling charts. And the game can last as long as you want. A few hours? A week? Seriously, it can just roll on and on. The basic game is that you're a knight in merry old England. Merry old Scotland, Wales, Ireland, and Gaul included. And you're trying to work your way up in chivalry, aka combat, and virtue, a.k.a. good deeds, to become a knight of the round table. So you basically travel around the board, rolling dice to see if you encounter other knights, kings, ladies, brigands, animals, and monsters. And then you roll the dice to see what their reaction is to you. Do they need help? Do they attack you? Or whatever. In the service of kings, you'll be sent on adventures to slay dragons, free imprisoned knights, defend a lady's honor, enter a jousting tournament, make a pilgrimage to Rome, or even seek the Holy Grail itself. As an Arthurian fan, Knights of Camelot had it all. This last game is my favorite fantasy board game, Talisman. I was taught the game on my friend Pete's second edition, and I have a third edition myself. And this game is like a free-for-all, as you pick a character from a colorful selection of knights, barbarians, trolls, minotaurs, wizards, and many, many more, depending on your expansion sets. Then you travel the land, growing in power, fighting monsters, getting followers, finding powerful objects, and even punching it out with fellow players. Until you feel you're powerful enough to get a talisman which allows you access to the causeway and the wizard's tower to face the final challenges and battle the dragon king in an effort to win the crown of command. And when you win, the game isn't over yet. The other players must submit to your rule, or they can continue playing, growing in power, and hoping to wrestle the crown of command away from you. Like I said, the game can be a free-for-all. Most of the time I don't enjoy player versus player action in games. But holding it off to the end, especially if you add in fun ending extras like the Belt of Hercules, Pandora's Box, and even the Void, well then it's all just crazy fun to me. With all that in mind, I thought about making my own game. Something like those, but, but maybe not as ponderous as those. 
Now, look at this old game of mine. The Amazing Spider-Man game with the Fantastic Four. Aside from some nice cover art by John Romita Sr., it's a pretty awful game. You don't even play Spider-Man or the Fantastic Four, really. You get two colored game pieces and move them around the board picking up villain cards. Some of them are Spider-Man villains, and some of them are names pulled out of a hat, as I have no idea who Lion Face is. Then you work your way to the center of the board, add up all your points from the villain cards, and the biggest point total wins. So, boring and illogical. But now, that concept intrigues me. Travel around a board and collect, no wait, that's lame, and defeat villains, with some ultimate goal in mind. I think I can make something of that. Check out my next video to see what it is, as I roll up my sleeves and really start to get into making my own fantasy board game. Hope you'll join me for it, and thanks for joining me on this walk down memory lane. See you soon.